uh, solo cups. We're gonna be playing some beer pong <laughs> first, and then we're gonna do this review. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Bro, this is a big shot. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? This is like a quarter of the. <laughs> it's like a quarter of the <laughs> cup. <sighs> Started right. <laughs> <laughs> So we got some wings. Look at that, we got wings. Put that on the projector, homemade projector uh -huh. stand that Shane has. There. We sell these, by the way. Yes, we do. <laughs> if you guys want to order these, hit me up in the comments. We got the ribs. And we got ribs. What's this and thing weigh? This thing weighs what, 80 pounds? 100 pounds? About 60 pounds. That's legit. Look at that, dude. Oh, no, that's not 60 pounds, bro. I think it's like 100 pounds. This is what we're working with today. We're going to be using the Elite Screens. 1.0 gain for the projector and then over here on this rolling rack we've got the sony z 9k ak television set we're going to pit the 7000 es projector against the ak television obviously the tv's brighter though the projector is nothing to sneeze at we all know tvs are better we know that's not true <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not true <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. This is their flagship 4K projector. Inside the box, we get the remote control documentation. Lastly, we get the power cable. You know, this thing is actually lighter than the 915 from last year. I believe it's specced as something like 20% less plastic than the 915 ES. So it is only 31 pounds. It's also a little bit smaller. If we're gonna go dimension wise, it is 20 inches long in depth. It is about 18 and a half inches wide and it is only about eight inches in height. Let's take a quick look at the connections. Here we have your LAN connection. We've got two HDMI 2.0 ins. We get your RS-232, USB input for firmware updates, etc. Also on the side here, we've got your on off power button, your input selection, menu button, little rocker panel, and then we've got your lens control button as well. There are vents on this side, also vents on the opposite side. There's vents on the front, and there's also vents on the back. This is a brand new lens as well. This has also got some software that will help with edge correction. So you will get a nice, even uniformity of sharpness across the entire screen. So that's one new feature for this uh, new laser model. And of course, like I said, this is a laser model, so it's not lamp-based. You will get 20,000 hours of lamp life on this. It is rated at 3,200 lumens. Other features it's got, it's got 95% DCI-P3 coverage, so you should get some great color accuracy out of it. This also has scene by scene HDR tone mapping. So a little bit different than what JVC offers. So I'm a little interested to see how it handles these really bright scenes for um, 4K HDR content. I'm assuming it's gonna look very similar to last year's models. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up. I'll come back, give you some thoughts and impressions. Most of you guys know that this is a scene from The Dark Knight. And this particular shot we are looking at Han and Lucius Fox, and I think the biggest difference that we can see in person is the amount of gradations in the cloud. Clearly the television set is brighter, but I do see some more detail in the clouds, whereas the, just keep in mind that none of these displays are calibrated. These are fresh out of the box settings with default settings that we did by eye. The projector is warmer, the television set is cooler looking. Um, you feel like a warmer tone, the, t the projector is on reference, the TV's on, the TV's on cinema. They both still exhibit, I'm gonna say, pretty much the same amount of detail. Well, the thing is, you'll see with the TV, at times it'll appear sharp, but then noisy, mm -hmm. where the projector always looks consistently good. Yeah, it's just filmic. I think when they're separate too, it's a big difference, but I see that the TV's definitely brighter, sharper, but sometimes to its detriment. Mm -hmm. And the T in the projector, it's like a projector almost has that brighter plasma look where it's more filmic but looks perfect. Mm -hmm. Where the TV's got more of a sharp wow, and then ooh, 
because the grainier sections on the TV definitely are noisy and not on the projector at all. Yeah, and then we were noticing on that one, one shot earlier that the speculars do, clearly they have more pop on the TV set. There's no getting around that. Um, but there you do get a little bit of the blown out uh, feel on the television set because it is so bright. This is like one of the brightest TVs out there um, because I do think the projectors, they're not gonna give you that same amount of pop as a TV set. Although if we do change the HDR dynamic slider to high, you can kind of mimic it in a way, but then you are really blowing out a lot of the detail and the highlights, as you can see here in the video. So, I mean, it's one of those things you gotta find a middle ground. Well, and there's specular highlights though on the sparks hitting the car. If you're looking at the projector alone, they're bright enough when not in compared to the TV. I think they do pop quite a bit on the projector more than I've seen from other projectors. So the mm -hmm. brightness is doing its thing, just comparing it to a TV that's nearly 4,000 nits. But when you glance at the projector alone, they do pop quite a bit. As far as like sharpness resolution wise, I think it's almost the wash. I mean, I know that's 8K, it's probably upscaling as well. But I mean, the projector is definitely sharp. It's crisp. You can see the same amount of detail, I think, uh, between the two. Absolutely. Well, how do you think the grain management is on the two sets? It is a little bit more noticeable on the projector, I think because the TV set is a brighter, kind of blows out the grain structure on the television set. But again, on the projector, the grain structure is welcome. So when you have a grainier scene on a display, it's obvious, and mm -hmm. then it's noisy. On the projector, if it's a bit grainier, it just goes back into that filmic description. So again, even keel all the way through. The motion on the projector is excellent. Yeah, very good. And also look at the lines, the windows in the buildings. I mean, they're both very crisp, very sharp. Yeah, you don't really lose any detail at all. Let's, hold on, look at that one building, that tall one in the background there. I think you can see how, you can see the outline, yeah, on the projector. You feel like on the TV, it just washes out a little bit? Yeah, that section there. Can you, mm -hmm. you can see all the lines for the individual windows. Well, you can see in the building next to it too, the red is a little white, a little more washed out in the Z9K, mm -hmm. and it seems a little deeper. Maybe, again, just keep in mind that these are not calibrated settings, but I think the extra brightness is kind of maybe just washing out a little bit more on the TV. All right, look at this shot here. Um, for me, I, I like the projector better. I can see the pores in his face better on his cheeks. Um, I just feel the texture is better, although in the shadowy areas, like his lapel, it does come through better on the television set because of that extra brightness. Again, it's filmic, so the, there's more dimensionality to his face, just because he pops more on the TV, and it feels like there's more detail in the background. Not that it's negligible, though, but again, it's filmic versus sharpness. Kind of always been that comparison. Um, Again, one's 8K, one's 4K, but the projector on its own is definitely more pleasing in terms of film. So we go back into what we always say, what do you see in the movie theater? And I feel like the projector is gonna deliver that all day. We'll watch, we've watched this entire movie while we've uh, done our testing, and I feel like the projector definitely has that more pleasing cinematic look, not just the size, but the whole, what I think as a TV fan, it's gonna appear soft to people in some scenes. Hmm. But I would say you don't lose any detail at all. Very, yeah. very impressed with it. Actually, I look, look at his chin on the projector. You can't see those pores on his chin on the TV. No, what you have on the, on the TV yeah. is you have a sharper line. His, his chin yeah. is more defined. But you know, yeah. your question is, does it really help the image for yeah. him to have a sharper chin versus losing the detail? I would say it's a little bit, not over time for a longer duration, would, be, would the television be a little bit more uh, harder on your eyes over the projector. I would say the projector gives you a less, less of a fatiguing image over the TV set. Personal preference, of course, but that's what I think. And again, more filmic and more even keel. So again, I think on the TV, you're gonna have a lot of highs, but maybe with even some blooming, you're gonna have some ooh, but on projector, it is more even keel and a more cinematic look throughout. And yeah. I guess looking at the projector, it almost looks like it's a calibrated panel versus a non-calibrated. So the reason I stopped this scene is I was actually looking at the projector when I stopped it. And I'll tell you why, is I love the warmth on the projector. Mm -hmm. Specular highlights look good on the 
Z9K, but I'll tell you what caught my eye in the Z9K is this piece right here. It's almost a bit of a hot spot. And it's kind of the price you pay for that peak brightness where if you look at those guys, that depth of field, they're blurry, but they're overly bright. They don't need to be. But on the projector, it's more natural. Mm -hmm. They blend into the background. Mm -hmm. But it's like what we said, where you trade specular highlights where you may not need them, but you pay for it someplace else. And remember, these are not professionally calibrated sets. These are out of the box, because I know we will get comments on our comments. Absolutely, but you gotta remember guys, we're also comparing two flagships of the same manufacturer. So whether they're calibrated or not, the Z9K is in cinema, it's not in, um, it's not in standard or vivid or anything like that. All of the processing is disabled. There is no advanced contrast enhancer, but it is upscaling to 8K. All right, so I guess this is where really HDR really comes into play here, especially for these darker scenes, because there's just a way more texture and refinement in the image on the television set, whereas the shadow detail on the projector is almost non-existent i don't want to be like it's horrible but there is so much more gradations in the blacks and grays on the television set where as the projector it's just not doing it so also interesting scene this isn't a specular highlight bright scene um, but if you do look anywhere you want <laughs> as a matter of fact but you can start from the lights over here on you know, the building, again, you do have some haloing, I'm off angle, but everything from the details of the clouds to the edge enhancement of the building. What is funny, Shane, is I would say the buildings mm -hmm. here are clearly animated, which I never noticed before, yeah. um, but there is no detail um, at all on the projector. It's completely almost blocky to where it's one color. Yeah. And you wouldn't think so because this isn't a, spe a specifically bright scene and I don't love the black bars in this scene for the projector at all. They are, have a very uh, LCD-ish kind of gray to them. But uh, yeah, the, the building over there on the left-hand side, you could tell it's a building on the TV. Like there's kind of a, you know, you could tell there's outline of a building there where it just looks like floating windows on the projector. It does, and even the, the fluorescent light on the right side of the screen um, looks like a real light where it's just, the, almost the detail is gone, but as a TV person, um, the left side would be unacceptable on a TV. In terms of black bars, we would look at that as almost an IPS, um, cheaper TV from, you know, so in this one scene, uh, lasts about three seconds, this is a clear win for the Z9K. It clearly not a good scene for the projector in this one. You know, continuing on to the shadow detail portion here, um, the television set, you can see the amount of detail in the tires. Yeah. Harder to discern on the projector. I mean, still there, you kind of have to look for it, but they definitely pop more on the, on the television set. Also, what's going on in the center of the Batmobile? You can see more detail, there's more. You can see the, the outline and the shape on the television set where it's muddier on the projector but uh, you can definitely see where like the axles are. You would think we disagree here. We do actually. The projector for me here is a clear win in terms of what looks real. Um, the, TV, the TV is looking like a game in this section a little bit to me. I think the outlining of even the tires and stuff, though you have more detail, it feels less real, where this does look more like a film. So Batman is the kind of movie it is anyway, has its hit or miss moments. You saw one miss on the projector, that's the first miss I've really seen in the whole movie. But this one, though the specular highlights are much punchier on the Z9K, I feel like the projector's bright enough. So yeah, so more, more of a clinical look on the television set. I know most, most folks are gonna be like, the pop is more aggressive on the TV set. Aggressive is the word though. Like, it, so is aggressive good at times? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it, as we mentioned in the last shot, or the second to last shot with dinner, it doesn't know when not to be aggressive. You know, it's a good scene here for the lights coming in, but the reason I picked this scene is I do like the specular highlights on the projector are really good. 
for a projector, obviously. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is their brightest projector that you can buy, you know. And then this is their brightest television set. Yeah. Well, and projector too, as we mentioned, we could, you know, uh, increase the HDR contrast enhancer, that, that section. But, you know, we're not here to try to make one more str stronger than the other and compromise its contrast ratio. This is a new standard and world-class cinema projection where you will see an HDR cinema presentation in high dynamic range with wide color on a big screen.